Okay, so maybe we can open this PV plant panel and see what we have inside of that. Yeah, let's see what we have inside. Uh, the shortcut for look under the mask is control enter. Here we can find some trace graphs for active reactive power as well as terminal voltage and frequency. Okay, let's see uh, the full screen mode. So to see that is the best way to click here. We can start our simulation. The best way is to uh, use this small button here. So let's start it. Now we start the model and we can see here that uh, time that passes for simulation it's actually real. Uh, let's connect this PV plan to the grid. The next thing to do is actually to enable inverter. So we are now connected to the grid and now we can ch change some irradiation. For example, let's increase irradiation that will affect directly to our active power. So we can see here on trade graph that it's actually jump on, on new value. And we can see here also some, some different values. There is also possibility to, to decrease some, some irradiation. So, and there is also possibility to use Q mode. Uh, now we are in Q mode, which means that uh, we will follow this, uh, this reference. So now it's zero, zero. So let's increase for a little bit. Now we, we increase for a little bit our, our uh, reactive power. So uh, if we disable this option, our inverter will follow uh, this, this voltage reference. So let's do that. So now we can see how, how that looks and we can see the uh, reactive power and, uh, and what the terminal voltage is changing actually. Okay, maybe we can go back and explain a little bit our scope and capture. Yeah, there is a good thing uh, here that we have one scope. So uh, let's see uh, how, how this signal looks like. So here on first window we can see terminal voltage and on other we can see terminal currents. There is also possibility to capture these waveforms. For example, let's put the time interval for 0.1. Okay, here we can see our capture. So let's capture these waveforms. Uh, the time interval is 0.1 seconds. So let's do that. Yeah, it's pretty fast and we can see now our uh, waveforms and we can also, let's, let's see a little bit better, we can zoom in and we can also zoom out, so just looking here and we can see small ripple uh, that comes from inverter. So I just want to ask uh, if uh, we have more than one inverter mm -hmm. in our model, can we also uh, adjust our settings so we can perform simulation in that way and if it's possible, can you just show us an example? Yes, so let's include one more inverter here. So the best way to do that is just copy and paste the previous one. Okay. Now we need to connect uh, this with, uh, in parallel with, with our first inverter. And basically where we can find uh, all that information connected uh, with, uh, actually specifications connected with the hill. Uh, yeah, so let me show you where we can find that. So uh, it's actually in our device, in that device table uh, we can find schematic settings and device table. So here we can see that we use, uh, like I said, configuration one and hill 604. Uh, we can use two, uh, two machine solvers. And there is also this parameter, maximum converter weight per, uh, per core. So here we can find that we, we can use only uh, weight of three. So our hill 604 actually uh, has predefined weight that, he, uh, that it can handle. So basically we have to separate this circuit in two parts so we can do our simulation. We can see here that uh, inside we have already one, one inverter with weight of three. So that, that's the reason why we need to use a uh, second port. To separate these two inverters into different 
cores, the best way to do that is to use core couplings. In this case, we will use three phase core coupling. So just uh, drag and drop. Uh, and more about more information about this core coupling we can find also here. So if someone has some problem with with instability when when we put this coupling, the the best way to to fix this is to put some snubbers inside. So let's go back to the SCADA. Okay, so basically should we uh, build our new PV plant panel or we can uh, just copy and paste this one and adjust it, and mm -hmm. adjust it to our uh, new inverter? Yeah, that's a good thing about this uh, PV plant. So we just can copy and paste this one. We have to just change some uh, local namespace. To do that, right click on this uh, panel and then go to properties, local namespace and then just fill up uh, this path to component, path to input and path to output. Let's find that names. So we can find here all these names stays the same, but we need to change just this uh, index one. Okay, let's do that. So let's put one here, one here, one here. So uh, we didn't change our uh, base values. So let's click OK and let's start our simulation. Here we can we can use uh, this PV uh, panel as as previous one. 